how we got the exhaust manifold off. This is, um, you know, it's good grotty, but a little bit oily in there. We're very, very oily in there. I'll just show you these ports here. Uh, cleanish fingers. Can you see where I'm going? I hope you can. I'm going right up on the roof and I'm just touching with my fingertip the valve and the guide. Looks like we're all to me. The thing's been parked for a couple of days, so I'll go up the other valve here. Yeah, not quite as bad. What about the next pot across? Oh yeah, we're wet in there. Oh yeah, baby. Okay. So to me, that's confirming we've got an issue with the cylinder head. So you yeah, have one of those things, look. See that gear there? This fella? That's the water pump. So if you got quoted a squillion bucks to change the water pump with one of those things, you'd know why, wouldn't you? So after much wailing and gnashing of teeth, we've got him off. And if you can see the shiny spot, is that in my camera? Just reflection. You can see the shiny spot just there. That's the bottom of the guide and the valve stem. And she's shiny. And she's shiny. So that guy and that guy. Whereas opposed to these ones, look. They're they're dry. And there we go. There's the number one cylinder. Look how nice and washed that is with, uh, with all that oil that's been going in there. Do you have a look? It's not like it's not super oily on top of the piston. So in saying that, I believe that the valve issue is certainly problem. Well, good day again. As you can see. I pulled the engine out. So there we go. I got that's that first offending piston. Compression rings. Nice and free. But oil rings um in there. Huh, okay. So, yeah, put a set of rings in, it's the right thing to do. Wear on the piston, yes, it has. It, uh, we'll put, um, we'll put rings and bearings in her and service those heads. And, uh, then I believe he's going to get rid of it. Okay. So we're in, back playing around with this, um, Nissan, if you can see in the, I'm sure you can, in the ring grooves there on the oil ring, that's this bottom one there, that's all nice and clean, there's some carbon in the second ring and some carbon in the top ring, and uh, so I've slipped an, oil, oil, <coughs> an old oil ring in there. And I measured the bore. It's just under three and three quarter inches. And um, general rule of thumb for ring gap is uh, three and a half thousandths per inch. So in saying that, this being three and three quarters will be generous. We'll say, let's just say it's a four inch bore and it's four thousandths per inch. 
that would be sixteen thousandths would be the gap down there if that was the case. That's seventy-two thousandths of an inch, so we know she's worn and it's really really sharp too, you could shape with that. But uh so that looks like it's 160,000 k's. It's 100,000 kilometres, 100,000 miles, and she's uh, she's pooched. So we've got a new set of rings. Diameter 95.5. What about we measure that up? 54.75. That's not right, is it? 94.35. There we go. So it's close enough to 95. Oh no. So. Uh, I'll get a ring out. We'll put her in the bore and we'll just see what sort of gap we got. Okay, so we'll pop a new ring in there. So we've got it being a bit better a bit prepared. We'll square it all up with the piston. And immediately you can see the gap is a lot less. So we'll get out my feel the gauges. And what do we say we want it here? We'll say 15, we'll try 15 in there. See if I can see what's going on here. 15 goes alright. Let's go for another size. Oh come on. One hand to feel the strips man, you know what the hard how hard that is. Uh, come on. Here we go. I'm sorry people. Sixteen. Sorry for the shaky cam. I'll try seventeen. Starting to get to the top end of it now. 17 no go. So we're about 16 thousandths there. I think that will be alright with that. But you can you can certainly see the difference between the gap. The other one as I said was 72 thousandths, so the bore itself is is nice in the ridge, there's no ridge there at all. So yep, that's what we're gonna do. We'll poke rings in her, give her a hone. Some big end bearings and no guarantees. So I've run the hone down there. <clears throat> it's got a couple of couple of lows in there. We're not going to be able to do too much with that though. I could probably scoot this, the hone in there a little bit more, but uh, which I probably will do. But I think it'll come up all right. Yeah before and after yeah very shiny in there isn't it anyway we'll get that sorted so new set of rings set of bearings head serviced and uh, a bit of a clean up and uh, that'll be that. Put it back together again, whack it back in the hole. And here's something you might find a little interesting. As you can see on this side, this is the offending bank that had all the smoke happening. We've got some low spots here. And that's not going to be an issue. I could probably go down a bit more with the hone. I've given them all about the same, so... But on the adjoining side, there's not... there's nothing. Perfect, beautiful. 
So whether that's a trait of this engine or not, I don't know. But uh, now you couldn't you couldn't ask for much more than that, really. Anyway, we'll get on to piston cleaning and uh, might get the uh, might get the rings in the pistons in today. So we got one in the hole. What I like to do I, when I've got the the thing in the uh, the piston and rod in the hole, I like to um, torque up the big end and just make sure you can give her a turn. And we're happy with that. And we'll go on to the uh, go on to the rest of them. So there we are. All the pistons are in. Um, now when I left off last time, I made mention that there's no warranty on this. <clears throat> now, when I say no warranty, it's not going to blow smoke. That's all the bloke wanted. Don't blow smoke. Now we've seen the wear in the pistons, we've seen the wear in the bore. I'll bring you over here and I'll just show you, show you a couple of these over here. So, when you look down on those bearings, you can see here, look, this one started to delaminate. Warning on the sides here. Um, crank itself isn't in bad shape, but we know it's not going to be the right shape. <laughs> and we know that that's going to. We, we know these are going to rattle. That's that's a given. So I'm not. There's no worry on noises. And yes, the heads are back. It's a nice, lot, nice, lot, not a lot nicer in there now. All cleaned. All lash set. And I just need to wait. I'm just waiting on a gasket kit. Oh, good day, gang. It's uh, timing chain time. Now yeah, we've got new tensioners, we've got new chains. I have done this side already. And what we need to do is we imagine that as a flat plane. And this dowel is at 12 o'clock. And this small pinhole, this small smaller dowel. So there's there's. There's one hole there, there's a dowel hole there, that's oil feed, and that's a locator, and that's to be 12 o'clock. And so what we would do is we would notch, and we would line up these two marks there, you can see them, with the dark links, and the same with the other side. There's another, there's dark link on that side, and there's a little, see that little notch there, you can see it, there it is. You line that, that dark link, you can just see that dark link there. Where's a pointy, where's a, where's a pointer? But you can, you can see it's a dark link, you can see it there. Right there, right there. And that'll line up with that little, that little dimple. As you see over here, I've already got this one on. There's those two marks. And over here, you can see the you can see the dark link there. And the dimple, you can see you should be able to see the dimple. Can we get in there? Yep, you can see the dimple on the dark link. So that side's done. All I gotta do is re you know do it again on this side. And uh, then we can go on to the main chain. Now, I'm not using any special tooling here, nothing to hold the cams. There are tools, specialised tools for doing this job in the Nissan book. I've had a look. And, um, yeah, I'm not using any, any special tools. Yes, you are really supposed to lock the crank up. 
So it stays top dead center number one, or top dead center. And you're supposed to lock the cam so that they are at their position they're supposed to be at. As you can see, I've got nothing locking camshafts up. Nothing. So, slide this bugger on, and you've got to you've got to be real ginger about it when you when you're putting it on. You've got to try and get these on exactly the same. Um, yeah, there's no giving the chain to allow it to, to wobble about, so we've got to do it uh, pretty gingerly. Flip that on there. So nothing's tight. Our two dark links lining up with our marks. We're at 12 o'clock. This lines up with this, as does this. Line up with this, as you see. Our dark link. Oh. The dark link is down in there. Can we see it? Well, it's pretty hard. But it's 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 pretty hard to do that way. I don't know. Pretty hard to see, but it's um Yep, it's lined up. They're lined up. We'll bolt those bolts in, tighten them up, and get on with the next bit. So there it is, it's on. We've lined up our mark there. We've lined up our mark there. We're in line with the case. We're in line with the case. Come down the bottom here. There's our mark there. There's our mark there. We're lined up with the key. And uh, now we just uh, pull the tensioner out, the pin out of the tensioner. And bang. That's done. So we've done it all right. The cam lobes should look like that on this first cylinder. You can see they're kind of mirroring mirroring each other. Cylinder one. And cylinder six should be mirroring each other as well. And as you see here, they're mirroring each other. And we're good. And what I need to do is I need to go into these holes, some of these holes here, these oil gallery holes that go down to the tensioners on both sides. And I need to run some oil down to fill up the tensioners and a lot, a lot of it's going to run down into the rest of the galleries and stuff like that. But um, I might have to... I may have to wait till I get the uh, front on it. Replace this seal here, this seal here, clean off the surface, it's pretty clean now. Clean off the outer plate and uh, bolt that back on, I guess, where we're at, at the minute. Well, we've got the old oil can, you won't be able to hear it. Here, bleeding the air out. I'll just keep doing that, we'll do the other side and um, oh, we've got oil running out now, look. We made it to the pump. Okay. Now, now I can uh, now I can fit the solenoid, this is the VCT solenoid, I can fit this onto the under the head with a new gasket. All metal gaskets in this metal RTV or rubber. That's all we got. I'm going to the uh, old paper gasket type things. But anyway, let's keep on moseying. Until on. sometime later. All back together. Sump is on. Just a night, nice, neat little bead of RTV everywhere. Everywhere looks just a nice little bead. A little bit sticking out. So the next step for this is uh, take it off the stand, put the drive plate back on it and uh, chuck it in the hole. And so we're in and bolted up and uh, all their clamps are all hooked up. 
This side's actually completed with the uh, exhaust and all the stuff back on it. I'm going to put the manifold on this side up here. As you can see, I haven't got the manifold on that one yet. I've just had to have repair that. Because um, on both of the manifolds, these, sorry, these holes for the shield, these little things for the shield, they'd snapped off. And someone welded the shield on, so I think I showed you that. So I drilled and tapped them out and welded them back on. And we've just burnt a lot of the oil out of the, um, out of the manifold, so uh, I'm ready to whack that and back on again. the top side. It's starting to look like a, a cramped engine bay again. So here's a nice little bit of uh, fabric cobbling. What do you think out of the catalytic converter? Look at this. Holy moly. Someone's going to a lot of trouble. That's not the best bit. She's empty. And I've told the guy. And he said, just put it back on. But it has a P0420. I said, I'm not guaranteeing the, go the code. Anyway, we'll put well, it all back on. That's a promising sight. We're going to close that. Yeah. Run it out. Let's see what we've got going on up here. At the moment, I don't think if anybody was to look under there, they'd go, oh, well, I don't see anything being done under here. This looks all factory, as it should do. So we all have really got now an air box, fan and uh, shroud, some plating underneath, and uh, might just might just arc her up. See what uh, see that it starts and does what it's supposed to before I put any coolant in it, which is always a good idea because. It's easier just to dump the water out rather than to jump, dump coolant. So, um, uh, yeah, airbox on. We'll hit the key and see what happens. So let's have a look. We'll go back and see what we, what did we find? We found it was blowing smoke. We found it was worn out inside. We put new rings, we put new bearings, we put new chains, and let's just see what it sounds like when we fire him up. See, we fixed her up. Let's go look for the smoke. No warning lights. And so what I now have to tell the bloke is that uh, your transmission's the next bit to go, buddy. And I wouldn't be surprised if that goes pretty soon. But anyway, hope you all enjoyed uh, coming along for the journey. And um, job satisfaction. Yeah, that was satisfaction. I actually didn't mind it. Didn't mind it at all. It was fun. So, uh, have yourselves a good one. Check you later.